Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about linked list. In the last video we have talked about arrays and what are the drawbacks in array. Now one of the drawbacks which we have seen is once you define the size of an array, you cannot expand it or you cannot even shrink it. But in case of linked list we can do that. Now in linked list what we can do is we can create a collection of elements and every element will be linked with each other. Okay, so let's let's make it simple now. So what I will do is let's take an example here. I will take four values. Let's say I want I want to take values like 12 or uh, the next value is let's say 6 and then we have 8 and then we have 3. So I want to store this four values. So I want to say 12, 6, 8 and 3. I want to store it as a collection, not individual because if you want to work with individual values, you could have created three or uh, four variables and you can assign those values. But if you want to keep it as one collection, in normal way we can create an array but the only problem is you cannot expand it. So in linked list what we do is we use a concept of a data and a reference. Now what it means? Now first of all to store these values I will not go for any uh, any continuous memory. What I will do is I will create these four, four boxes. So the first box is will have a value 12. The second box maybe it's anywhere. So you have a sequential memory right? You, you can have your data anywhere. But just to make it simple, you know, just to represent in a dynamic format, I'm doing in sale away. So we have one more value here, which is six. And then let me just draw one more here, which is eight. And the last one, which is three. So we have, we have these four values. We have 12, six, eight, and three. Now what I want to do is I want to say this is a collection, but then it is possible that they are not in a continuous location. There might be some elements in between. So let's say we have 12 here. After that, we have some element here, maybe A, B. Uh, then you'll be having some some more, more than maybe five to six elements in between, maybe 15, 20 elements in between. So they're not continuous, right? So when I say I have these elements, they're not in sequence. Example, if I want to say, hey, I want to fetch the third value. How can you mention third value? Because you, you don't have any sequence. If you want to make them in sequence, what you have to do is, first of all, you have to make the first element as a head. So you have to make this as a head. So once you have made this head, that means this is the first element. So that is simple. But how about the second element? How, we do, how do you link the first one and the second one? Now to make it work, we will call each element here as nodes. So the elements which we are using here are nodes. So this is a node, this is also a node, the 8 is also a node and 3 is also a node. And of course, all these are elements. So node value is 12, node value is 6, node value is 8, and node value is 3. Or you can call them as value, you can call them as info. Now, how do you link this 12 and 6? The way you link is by creating one more memory here or one more box. Now, this node will have two things. The first one is the info. So this 12 here is the info. And the next one will be the address of the next node. Now, every node will have an address, of course, right? So let's say the address for this node is 512. That's the address for this node. The address for this node is, let's say, 326. The address for this node is, let's say, 101. And the address for this node is, let's say, 202. So we have all this address here. Now, in this box, this will have the address of the next node. So in, in our example, 6 is our next node, right? If you want to have 8 as a next node, you can write the address of 8 here. But in this case, 6 is our next node. As you can see the sequence here. I want to maintain the sequence. You can say 3, 2, 6. So this is the address of the next node. That means we have a line between this. So we have a line between the first node and the second node. So this node 1, this node 2, node 3 and node 4. Now, as you guessed it right, in 6, you'll be having the address of three, address of 8, which is 101. So this is 101 here. And this one will have 2, 0, 2. So we have a reference. So this is a link. And even this is a link. And that's quite simple, right? But the problem is, what about the last element? Now, of course, we don't have any element after that. Even, that, even there, we'll be having an address. But then address of what? So it will be null. Now, since we don't have anything after that, it is null. So we have the first node here, which is 12. This is the first node, second node, third node, and fourth node. And fourth node will be null because we don't have anything after that. This is how you create a linked list. So we have a list of values and they all are linked. And that's why they say linked because they all are linked and a list because they are this, it's a list. So once we have all these values assigned, this is a list. Now, in the, if you remember, in the start of the session, we, talk, we said this is expandable. So when I say it is expandable, how do I start the first one? I mean, how do I add the element anywhere? 
So maybe I will start by adding the element at the end. Maybe I want to add the element here after 3. So let's say in the list we have one more value here, let's say 7. And how do we add 7 at the end here? So what you can do is, as this, this very simple step, just create a node here, whatever node you want. And then the value for this node will be 7. So this is the value, right? What about the address? Now this is, as this is the last one, you can simply put here null. So you can say this is null because this is the last one. But then we have mentioned 3 as null, right? But then now 3 is not the last element. The last element is 7. So after 3 also we have 7. And the 7 will also have an address. Uh, let's say the address for this one is uh, 1, 2, 6. This is the address. If you want to link this, you have to mention after 3 we have 7. So what you will do is you have to change this value. So now you cannot have null here. Now you have to make it 1, 2, 6. After 3 we have 7, right? So you have to mention the address here. And then we can... Uh, we can give an arrow. So this is, the 7 is the last element here. After 3, we have 7. That's how you can simply add the value. It's that simple. Uh, can we add the value at the start? Yeah, it's quite possible. Uh, the only thing you have to do is, again, create a node. So we got a next node here. And let's say the value for, so after before 12 as well, I want to assign a value like 5. I want to have a value 5 here. So what you can do is, you can make the value 5 here. And how do I refer? So... Now, there is one more change. You cannot refer the 12 as the head element now. So 12 is no more the head element. Now, the head element is 5. And of course, this will have an address. So let's say 5 is at address uh, 306. That's the address. Now, what you will do is in 5, after 5, the element is 12, right? So we have to mention the address of 12 here, which is one, uh, 5, 1, 2. So, five, one, so after 5, we have 12. So that means we have an arrow. So 5 is the first element now because that is head and then after that we have 12, after that we have 6, after that we have 8. So that's how we can add the value at the start. Now can we add at the, uh, the value at, in the in, in somewhere in the middle? And the answer is yes, it's quite possible. What you can do is you can create one more box here. Let me make a box and that box will have a value. So what I want to add, so between 6 and 8 I want to add let's say 9. So I want to add 9 between 6 and 8. So you can create a 9, you can have a 9 value here and then it will have its own address, let's say 506, I hope that address is not covered here. So we have 506 here. I know if you can observe, I'm giving random values or random addresses because all these values will be stored somewhere else you, you don't even know, right? They're not in sequence. I mean, you will know by the address, but then they're not in sequence. So if you don't have these links, it will they, you cannot fetch them in sequence. Okay, so now in 9, so we have to mention 9 comes before 8. So 9 will have an address of 8, which is 1, 0, 1. So now 9 is linking to 8. That means we have to remove, I mean, we have to, of course, remove this link. But then if you remove this link, what should I put here? So 6, so inside 6 will be not, so the address will not be of 8 now. It will be of, of 9. So we have to say 5, 0, 6. And we have to give an arrow. So of course we are not using this arrow anymore. So after 6 we have 9, after 9 we have 8. So that's how you can add values in between. So it's that comfortable because we don't, we are not consuming data in a continuous location. So we can create as many nodes as possible provided you have uh, enough memory in your system. Uh, it will create number of nodes and all these nodes will be connected with a linked list. Now this type of linked list which we have created here is called as a singly linked list because it is single linked list. Uh, that means we also, we also have a doubly linked list or double linked list. Yes, we also have a double linked list. We'll see that in the in the in the one of the videos in future. But now this is a single linked list. So this is better than arrays, right? So before we have talked about arrays and now we are talking about linked list. So now you tell me which is better. Is it array or linked list? Now, of course, uh, both have their advantage and drawback, but what is the advantage? So the adv advantage of using linked list is it is expandable. You can increase the size of the links, you can reduce the size of the list, right? So you can say the advantage here is expandable. But the problem in linked list is it is slow. So when I say drawbacks, uh, it is slow in t in when, when you compare with array, because in array, it works with index numbers. Now, since everything is stored in a sequence, it works with index numbers and you can fetch the value randomly. So the benefit of array is it, you can fetch the value randomly, right? So that's the positivity of it. So let's say this is arrow positive value and the, so linked list drawback is it's slow, 
we have to also mention the drawback of Adi, right? In fact, we have talked about it in the in the previous video. It's not expandable. So yes, linked list is slow because if you want to fetch a particular value, let's say if you want to fetch eight, you cannot directly go to eight. You have to go from five. So first you have to go to uh, five. Then you can so you can go to, first you have to go to five. Then you have to go to twelve. So you have to you have to follow that sequence, and then you can reach to eight. In fact, we also have a concept of big big O notation. Again, we have not discussed that yet. So we'll say big O notation would be a uh, big O big O N. So if you want to search for the value, you have to say big O N. Again, we'll talk about it later. Remember that linked list to, for search it uses big O uh, N. So it is time consuming compared to link uh, compared to array in in terms of searching. But in uh, but if you want to fetch, uh, if you want to insert value in between, linked list is the best one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Now this can be implemented using any language which you like. You can implement this with C, you can implement that with C++, you can implement it with Java or maybe Python. Uh, so you will see the implementation in the further videos. So click on the like button if you enjoyed it and do subscribe for further videos everyone. Thank you so much for watching.